JP may be standing by this defendant, but the largest, and, and by, by this nominee, I should say, to the DOJ, but the largest police organization in America thinks the president's nomination sends a decidedly different message. And in a letter to the president, the National Fraternal Order of Police president writes, quote, this nomination can be interpreted in only one way. It is a thumb in the eye of our nation's law enforcement officers. Chuck Canterbury is the man behind that letter and the president of the Fraternal Order of Police. Also joining me is Pennsylvania Congressman Mike Fitzpatrick, who wrote a similar letter of his own to President Obama, along with the support of several other lawmakers. Representative Fitzpatrick, let me start with you. You write to the president saying, I could not be more incensed and confounded. This is, these attorneys perverted the justice system and have made a mockery of the jury's verdict. You urge him to reconsider the nomination. Why are you so incensed? Well, Megan, first, thank you for uh, keeping the spotlight on this case, because it's, although it's been 33 years, the city of Philadelphia and the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania have not forgotten uh, what happened, that uh, Mamiya Abu-Jamal, who at the time uh, was going by the name Wesley Cook, uh, is a convicted cop killer, and that over the course of 33 years, he converted himself into some sort of a political prisoner, and from prison, he created a whole cottage industry of tapes and speeches and radio shows, and after 33 years, the Legal Defense Fund and this nominee decided to insert themselves on behalf of the convicted cop killer rather than protecting the constitutional and the civil rights of the victim, namely Daniel Faulkner, the Philadelphia police officer. Is there any question whether he did it, whether he committed the crime? I don't think there's any question. As, you, as we heard in the, in the intro, a, a jury of his peers convicted him. He was sentenced by a judge. The case has been the United States Supreme Court. He was given an opportunity um, to testify. His own brother was a witness to the case and in 33 years has never defended uh, uh, Abu uh, Jamal mm -hmm. during the whole 33 year time frame. Let me ask you, Chuck, because we heard um, the, the nominee, Debu Adigbolik, uh, the one who they want to take over this top post at DOJ. We heard him testify before the Senate two days or yesterday and say, look, you don't have to like the defendant you're representing, but we saw a legal wrong here. And by the way, the legal case we argued, we won. We got the death sentence thrown out because we feel the jury wasn't given the proper instructions. And so, you know, by necessities, as I, I've been vindicated in my legal position, why are you so upset about this man's nomination? Well, I think the statement by the NAACP uh, attorney with the LDF clearly said that their position all along was that Wesley Cook, a.k.a. Mumia Jamal, was a political prisoner. Uh, he's not. He's a convicted murderer. He killed Daniel in cold blood. The facts of the case have, are, are clear. They've always been clear. And the, the fact that they interjected themselves and helped him to become a cause celeb all over the world, not just in the United States. Uh, St. Croix, France, tried to name a street after Mumia Jamal. He's a murderer. And, and they helped to promulgate the fact that he was some sort of political prisoner is absolutely ridiculous. So they weren't He's court, a a, court appointed. I mean, this is they volunteered. This guy included this absolutely. nominee. He volunteered to help this man. Absolutely, and and many uh, people in the organization led rallies all over the country to free Mumia, free Mumia. He's a convicted murderer. The court said he was a convicted murderer 32 years ago. He's never the ch those charges of murder have never been disputed by Wesley Cook. And uh, the only part of the case uh, that was overturned was the death sentence. And, uh, and, and frankly, uh, we're not concerned about that. What we're concerned about is that they turned a cab driver into a martyr, and he's not. He's a murderer. Representative, uh, my question to you. He, he is, his defense, when questioned about this before the Senate Judiciary Committee, because this guy needs to be confirmed, was, I'm a lawyer. Lawyers represent a lot of people, good, bad. You know, it doesn't mean that we're just like them. It's a matter of upholding the Constitution. Why is that not an acceptable answer to you? Well, certainly, you know, that's an answer, but, uh, you know, he could have inserted himself in any one of a number of cases throughout the country. They decided to insert themselves in a 33-year-old case of a clearly convicted cop killer from the city of Philadelphia. The facts were uncontradicted. Well, what does that tell uh, you about this nominee? I mean, the, for the folks walk, watching at home thinking about uh, Debu Adigbole becoming our next civil rights top chief at the DOJ, what does it tell you? His attorneys at the conclusion uh, attended a rally in the city of Philadelphia and said they could not have been prouder than to have had the opportunity not to represent justice, not to fight for the Constitution, but to represent Mamou Jamal. And the fact that they chose to insert themselves in this 33-year-old case 
pretty much tells you all you need to know about this nominee and about the administration's commitment to constitutional and civil rights of victims and of police officers. Wow. And I know, Chuck, that you say it is a thumb in the eye that it demonstrates a lack of regard or empathy for those who strive to keep the president and everyone else in our nation safe. We will see whether the, whether the nomination proceeds as expected. Gentlemen, thank you both. Thank you, Megan. Thank you, Megan. Up next, watch this.